This is a trick that's very simple. This is a trick that you can learn in less than 10 minutes. And this is a trick that you can perform by the end of this video. Let me give you the key to unlock this effect. What up crew, it is Magic Monday, and this is your place to learn magic, master performance, and captivate audiences. If you're joining me for the first time, hey there, my name is Vineet, and I go by Card Mechanic here on YouTube. The trick I'm about to show you today relies on one key principle that you probably already know about, but let's see if you can figure it out based on my performance. So before we begin, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, and now, let's do it. All right guys, so check this out, because you always ask today, I'll be using the Candice Lupus playing cards. I designed and produced these myself, so I always love getting to actually use them. I'll give the deck a couple of cuts, hand it over to the spectator, and they're allowed to shuffle it up as much as they'd like, just to their heart's content, all right? So just something like this, maybe something like this. Maybe even they can do something like this, but not many people can. We'll end it with one final cut. Now, I'm gonna spread the deck out. The spectator can select any chunk of playing cards they'd like from this whole deck. Let's just say they select these. See, I threw you off. You thought it was gonna go over there? No, I went here. So maybe we'll throw in a few more here, just like this. So we have a decent chunk of playing cards. Now when a spectator, if a spectator was here, I would go through each one of these playing cards like this, asking the spectator just to memorize one. And of course, if they have to memorize one, then we have to go through every single playing card. Now to make this as fair as possible, I'm gonna pick one completely at random and I'm gonna turn away. I can even have my eyes closed for this while I have a spectator go ahead, uh, take out the one playing card they thought of. Let's just say it's that card right over here. They put it right face down on the table. They shuffle up the rest of these playing cards and then I can come right back. And just for me to make this as fair as possible, I'll take this deck, I'll give this deck a shuffle as well, just something like this. And uh, there we go. Pretty sloppy, but you know, gets the job done. Uh, from here, the spectator can take their packet of playing cards that they shuffled up. Um, they can put it right here, leave this card right on top, and you know what, we'll even give the deck a cut. And of course, the spectator can give the deck a cut. So now truly, the card is lost somewhere in this packet. Now, I want the spectator, if I had an actual spectator here, I'd want them to tell the card to another person in the room. And the reason for that is because I could have obviously just talked to the spectator in advance and told them, you know, I want you to remember, and I, whatever card I show you, just say it's your card. So I want you, as a spectator, to tell someone in the room what card you selected. Uh, once that's complete, we'll give the deck maybe one more quick shuffle to something like this. And now your card is truly lost somewhere in the deck. But now here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna to try to make eye contact with you. And although you can't see my face here on camera, I'm gonna to try to make eye contact and try to read how your reaction is as I go through these cards. Hmm, hmm. Oh, I got, a, I got a decent feeling over here. Oh, nope, nope, nope. You thought it was a decent feeling, but it was not. Uh, oh, oh, I passed it. I definitely passed it. I don't think it's over here. I think you already saw your card. And let go here. And you had a decent feeling here, but you thought it was a lie, so. Your card is definitely somewhere here. Um, hmm, hmm, okay, here we go, here we go. Just do your best to think of it, don't, don't think too hard. Okay, I have a feeling it's not here, and we're left with just these cards. I'm gonna get rid of these, yep, I'm gonna get rid of these, and we have this many cards left, and here we go. Are you ready for this? Your card is not here, your card is not here, but there's one card right in the center, and there's your selected card. The card you thought of and shuffled into the deck, the Nine of Hearts. Magic. <sighs> All right, so let's talk about this trick. And just to give you a little bit of background on this effect, this is known as a meeting of the minds from the Royal Road to Card Magic. And they made a couple of modifications to it here and there, but the general concept is pretty much the same. So now that you have that background, let's go ahead and break it down. First things first, of course, you take the deck right out of the tuck case and hand it over to the spectator to shuffle up as much as they'd like. So give the, uh, give the deck a nice little shuffle, maybe just something like this. If they're truly advanced, maybe they can even give it a riffle shuffle and bam, complete that bridge. That rarely ever happens, but just in case it does, be ready for it. Anyway, so what's gonna happen now is you're gonna take the deck back from the spectator and spread it out and ask them to pick out a chunk of playing cards from the center of the pile. Let's just say they select these playing cards. As they take these playing cards, I would actually want you to ask them to shuffle it up. And here's why. This is actually gonna be a piece of misdirection that you use to grab a peek either at the top card of the deck here or the bottom card of the deck because this trick relies on one key principle and that is the key card principle. Did you see that coming? So once you either take a peek at the bottom card or the top card, a couple easy ways to do this is you can give the deck a dribble. If you wanna take a peek at the top card, just dribble the cards like this, and you can easily take a peek and see that it is the queen of hearts. 
or while you're gesturing to the spectator, it's very easy to gesture with the deck uh, face up or with the uh, with the faces of the cards face up and you could see it's a Queen of Spades. So for our purposes, let's say we've remembered the top card, it's a Queen of Hearts and we're using the Queen of Hearts as our key card, right? So you're doing that. The spectator now is shuffling up the packet. Once you're done shuffling up the packet, you take it back from the spectator. And now, after you've taken it back from the spectator, you're gonna go through each one of these cards one at a time and flash them in the spectator's face. And the reasoning behind doing this is because you wanna count how many cards are in this packet that they have. In our case, it is eight. But of course, you wouldn't usually wouldn't know that just by holding the packet unless you're, you know, a super pro. But you're showing one card at a time, asking the spectator just to remember one card. And as you're doing this, again, you're counting how many cards there are. Once it's complete, you can hand this packet over to the spectator. You can close your eyes, turn around, I, I don't know, get masked, blindfolded. What else can you do? But the point is, you really don't have to be there. All you have to do is instruct them to take one card out, their selected card, take that out of the packet, and then shuffle this up. Once that's complete, let's say their card is the three of spades, right? So that's face down on the table. They shuffled up this packet and you come back around and you want to shuffle up this packet now just to show them that everything is being shuffled up. But the way you want to shuffle it up is you want to maintain that card on top. Or if you remember the bottom card, you can use the shuffle to uh, control this bottom card to the top. And personally, the method I use is the uh, controlled shuffle, um, the overhand shuffle. So uh, let's just say we have to maintain our top card and I have a tutorial on this. You can check it out. Toss over a packet of cards, shift these back, continue shuffling over. You have a break here. You can push down forward. Now you've created that break. Shuffle the rest over. Once you get to that break, you put that on top and that top card has been maintained. So from here, you can say everything has been shuffled. You can take this, put it here. You can take the spectator selected card and put it here. Of course, you can have the spectator do all this because the more the spectator interacts with the trick, the more fun and uh, I guess effective it'll be at the end. Once all this is complete, you remember your key card. You also remember how many cards were in the packet, which was eight. So you give the deck now a cut, just something like this. Now in my performance, I also gave the deck an overhand shuffle, but in order to actually do that, you have to be fairly comfortable with not separating cards when you're doing the overhand shuffle. So when you're doing something like this, you wanna make sure the whole center packet that you shuffled in after giving the deck a cut stays exactly where it is. So if you're not too, too pro at it, I'd recommend not doing that, but you can give the deck as many cuts as you want. Of course, these are single cuts. Give the deck as many single cuts as you want, all right? So maybe something like this. I don't know how many cuts I gave it, but now it's gonna focus pretty much all on performance. So as you're going through, right, you're looking for your queen of hearts. So your queen of hearts is, did I miss the queen of hearts? Let me give the deck one more cut right over here. And uh, the queen of hearts is right over here, right? So queen of hearts, you can see. Now you're gonna count eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know the spectator selected card is the three of spades. So from here, again, it's all 100% performance. You can pretty much do this however, however, um, however you'd like. Uh, what I read in the World War II Card Magic was that um, a little bit of what I talked about in the performance is that I tell the audience that I could have met up with the spectator that who selected their card beforehand and told them that I wanted to I wanted them to say yes to whatever card that I showed them at the end. So what I want them to do is either write it down on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope somewhere that no one can reach, or you can just tell someone who's uh, sitting close by. And uh, once that is done. You can try to um, really play it up as almost like a mind reading or not even mind reading, but like, um, what's the word for it? Reaction reading, maybe that's what it could be called. But as you're going through the deck, you're reading and trying to look at what reactions they have. And you can say, uh, you know, what I did in my performance was when I got to the, it was a nine of hearts. When I got to the nine of diamonds, I felt like, oh, maybe there's something here. Oh, wait, no, you thought there was something there, but actually not really. So you can kind of play off um, what you think would, I guess people's tendencies would naturally be. And from there, you can kind of start eliminating cards. So you know, you know, it's uh, none of these, you know, it's none of these, and really trimming it down to all the way to the bottom. And again, this is all 100% how you would like to perform it. So trimming it all the way down to the bottom, maybe you're left with just these two cards and you can shuffle them up like this for the spectator. Of course, you, you have to know which one's which. So then you could say, okay, just select one, whichever one that you feel stronger towards. Now, generally people will pick the card on their right hand side. So you'd want them, you want them to, uh, or you want to have the card on your left hand side. So they would 
be more likely to pick it. You tell them just to select one card. You don't say the card you select will be the one you choose. Just select one card. So if they choose the card that, you know, their intuition is telling them, they'll select their selected card. If not, then you say, okay, we'll eliminate that card, leaving us with the one selected key card, even though this is not really the key card, but it's their selected card. It's pretty cool the things you can do with a key card. See, I told you this trick relies on one key principle. Little did you know it was the key card principle, or maybe you didn't know. Are my corny jokes becoming too predictable? If you want to check out more simple card tricks that you can pretty much learn almost immediately, click on that video right over there. I think you'll find what you're looking for. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. It's always a pleasure having you on the channel. Hope you have a great day ahead and maybe I'll see you in that video.